What is going on everyone, my name is Andy, welcome back to another FPL video, and this one is some of my early thoughts ahead of game week 33, so there's a few players that I want to talk about, and then I'm going to go through some notes from the weekend as well, so if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, let's get into it. All right, let's start off with Son, and I sense there's probably a little bit of frustration starting to creep into anyone that owns him, especially if in game week 31... You had a choice between selling him or Foden. And obviously Foden goes and bangs a hat-trick, Son blanks. And now he's only gone and got an assist against Nottingham Forest at home. It doesn't feel great. I watched the game. Actually, I watched the West Ham game as well. He wasn't... I wouldn't say he had a huge amount of chances in either game. Now, yesterday against Forest, there was a shot that was saved onto the post. It was pretty close to going in. And had that gone in, maybe we'd be thinking a little bit differently. So there's always fine margins in FPL. But it hasn't been fantastic to watch. That being said, Newcastle like to give up a lot of chances. And I feel like that match might be a little bit more open. And that will suit Spurs and will suit Son as well. It helped Newcastle too, of course. And Spurs always give up chances. But I feel like keeping Son for this week is probably a good plan for most people. But obviously, it depends what chip strategy and stuff you're on, of course. If you're free hit 34, I can't see any reason to sell Son this week. Because after 34, you go straight into a double of Arsenal at home and Chelsea away, which on paper is not great. And then it's Liverpool away in 36. But Son, you know, is going to play. His minutes are always great. He's on penalties, all that stuff we know. And he will get chances in those games, even if it's only one or two. Sometimes that's all it takes. Yes, it didn't go well in the last two game weeks. But if anything, I think those kind of matches sometimes suit Son that little bit better. There probably will be a bit of space in behind and we know how good he is running into that. So on free hit 34... I don't think there's really any justification to sell Son, especially when you're also going to have a double in 37 that's not confirmed yet, but Burnley and City at home, followed by Sheffield United away last game of the season. If you're dead ending into 34, and then wildcarding in 35, then there's probably more reason to get rid of him, and that's something that I'm looking at as well. But I still think I'd rather do it in game week 34. I just feel like that Newcastle game could be good. If you're in a position where your team is looking set and you've got luxury transfers and you don't own Phil Foden and it looks like he's going to start against Luton, then I don't mind the Son to Foden switch. But I guess the question to ask yourself is, is there a better move I can make to set myself up for game week 34? Because although Man City have got Luton at home, and obviously, we can wait and see what happens in the European matches this week. Definitely don't make any early moves unless you absolutely have to. Even if Foden starts against Luton, what will his minutes be like? Will he go and play a full 90? Will he come off on 60, 70? We just don't know. Whereas you know Son's going to go and play 90 and he's got penalties as well. And don't get me wrong, if I was free hitting in 33 and I could only have one of these players, it would almost certainly be Foden. But as a transfer, I just don't know if it's worth making this week. It really probably depends on what position you're in like for me for example i could do with upgrading bradley to van dyke at some point the only way i can do that is to sell son but my personal preference is to try and put that off for one more game week and just get rid of him in game week 34 the other thing to consider as well is how much money you're going to lose because no matter how bad those fixtures are on paper for spurs after 34 you will want son back he's the only attacker i think right now you can be pretty happy with owning from Spurs like Madison keeps coming off early lack of returns recently Richardson obviously injured at the moment may or may not be back later on Son is the one right uh, so that's free hit 34 and dead end 34 if you've got no chips it's probably a little bit more difficult but if you could bench him in 34 to have him ready later on I'd probably do that so I've still got faith in Son let's not forget it was only kind of three game weeks ago he's scoring against Luton 10 pointer he blanked against Fulham in blank game week 29 we got a 17 pointer against Villa the returns will come again. Like He's too good for that not to happen, but it has been frustrating. I just think for most people, it's probably worth keeping him for 33. All right, let's talk about Dominic Solanke next. And do you know what kind of player he feels like? The one every season that people look back on and say, why did we keep him just because he had a double game week? There was much better single game week options available. There's always some players like that every single year. Personally, I have owned him for a while now, ahead of that double in 28. I've got no plans to sell him. Apart from the fact I've obviously made videos and I talk about these things, I haven't really given a second's thought to getting rid of Solanke. Like Man United at home is not a bad fixture. They will give up chances. We've seen that in plenty of matches this year. And then it's a double of Villa away and Wolves away. Is there a chance that single game week players like Isaac outscore him as they have done since game week 30? Of course that can happen. But I just think for most people's 
teams, there's a more important transfer to concentrate on, right? If you're not free hitting in 34, I cannot see any reason to sell Solanke, whether you're wildcarding in 35 or even playing the whole way through. Because if you've got no chips and he gets through double game week 34 and he does blank, it's still bright in a home. It's not the worst fixture, especially if you've got other fires to put out. Because the good thing about Solanke is you know he's always going to play, right? Even with this injury that he's been carrying that they were managing him through, he's still playing 80 minutes plus in every single game. Over the season, according to Fantasy Football Hub, it's 0.5 unexpected goals per 90, 0.06 expected assists. They are really good numbers, especially when you mostly play 90 minutes as well. And you've got penalties in your locker too. Now, will Bournemouth go and get any penalties? Probably not. But you never know, right? And I just think of someone like Isaac. He, even with the blank this week in game week 32, he's still kind of the one that a lot of people want to go for. And again, if you're free hit 34, I think that makes a lot of sense, especially when Newcastle will double later on. But if you look at his recent returns, I, I, it's going to sound like I think he's only got penalties. And that is not the case. Isaac is a brilliant player. And I'm not trying to take anything away from people that picked him. There's a reason we choose penalty takers in FPL it's just easy extra points but if you remove the two he got from west ham in three game weeks he's got one goal one assist outside of that and in the same number of game weeks for Solanke, it's just one goal so he's only one assist behind you know outside of the penalties now i get what people will say you know if well i won't go into that right if my auntie had wheels she'd be a bike etc i get it he did get those penalties he did score them but they're not very predictable, right? It's not guaranteed that Newcastle will always get more penalties than Bournemouth. So I'm not trying to say that Isaac is a bad option. He's not. He's brilliant. I'm just saying that Solanke is nowhere near a terrible option either. And I just think for most people's teams, you've surely got a more interesting transfer to make this week than to remove him before Man United are home. And part of FPL, honestly, is just picking players that look good on paper, i.e. they've got good underlying numbers, which Slanky does. They've got good fixtures, which I would say they do as well. And then just hoping for the best. It might be that he blanks in all three of those games, but would I look back and say it was a bad decision to keep hold of him? Not really, right? Not without that hindsight. So, uh, yeah, I think although people are starting to kind of say, are we just keeping him because of the doubles? What about Isaac? I understand that. And to be fair, Newcastle's fixtures are pretty good. They've got Spurs at home this week, which is probably almost as good as man united at home man united are definitely the worst defense out of the two but spurs are not watertight either we saw how many chances forrest got yesterday chris uh, chris wood scored once he could have scored a hat trick yesterday he had that header the the chance he hit against the post so he's at will get um chances against spurs and then it's palace away in game week 34 do i think that Isaac can outscore Solanke in the double personally my money would be on Solanke. so I, I think i would just be keeping hold of him i get that we might be looking back in a few weeks' time saying, why did we keep hold of him? I think he's perfectly fine for now. I don't see any reason to sell. All right, let's talk about Alexis McAllister next. I've had quite a few questions about him recently. And my opinion of him as an FPL pick hasn't really changed too much over the last few weeks. Obviously, Endo playing as a six means McAllister can play more of an eight, get forward more. And that makes him a bit more appealing for FPL. And I get that. And I do think for 5.9 million, he probably is one of the best midfield picks over the next couple of weeks. But in terms of Liverpool picks, bearing in mind they've got Fulham away and Everton away in game week 34, I don't think he's part of the best three. I think all of Van Dijk, Diaz, Darwin and Salah are better options. And I think when Liverpool have a double game week like that, you should be looking to triple up. And where possible, you should be looking to get the best three picks in for your team, right? And I just don't think at the moment money is so much of an issue You've got to go for McAllister to enable other players. It might be that your team value is a little bit lower. In that case, you could think about him a little bit more. But I know for my team, right, I've got Haaland and Salah, and I've got Darwin, and I'm easily going to be able to free up the funds to get either Diaz or Van Dijk, whichever one I want. And my team value is pretty good, but it's not right up there either. So I think for most people, it should be possible to go for three of the other four players that I've mentioned. If you already had McAllister in your team, is it worth, you know, a transfer out to a Diaz? I would say it probably is, but it really depends on how many other fires you've got to put out. If you're if you're not using a chipping game week 34, like the free hit, and you've got a bunch of other players you need to bring in, then maybe in that case I'd leave McAllister in. But as an option to buy right now, if it's between him or Diaz, I think there's only one option really. Like I don't want to be super negative about McAllister because I do think there's some positives, right? One of which is 
He always plays 90 minutes, right? Or at least he has for the last five game weeks. Before that, it's 88, 82. And then you've got another four 90 minutes in a row. So his minutes are always going to be good. So at least he's going to be on the pitch to potentially get returns. If Salah is subbed off at any point, he should take penalties as well. We saw that against Man City. Salah wasn't on the pitch and McAllister took the penalty. And when he does get returns, he's very good for bonus as well, or has been recently. Against Sheffield United, he got the goal, three bonus. Gold against City, three bonus. Um, the two assists against Luton, one bonus. Against Brentford, it was one goal, one bonus as well. So he's one of those players that when he does pick up a return, he's probably going to get an extra one to three on top of that. So I do like him for that reason. But even playing in this more advanced role where he doesn't have to sit so much, I, just, I don't know. I, I would just think of it, right? If I gave you 100 quid and I said you could bet on double game week 34 on McAllister, Diaz, or, or McAllister versus Darwin, whoever it is, and if you pick the right player who's going to score the most points, you get that 100 quid back, who would you go for? Like, Would it ever be McAllister? I'd say probably not. So I don't think he's a bad option in general. I just think with only three spots in our teams, you've got to go for the best when it's a team like like Liverpool. It's, it's similar with, it's not quite the same, but it's similar-ish with Arsenal, right? I wouldn't compromise on having, as long as he's fit, like Saka, Odegaard, Havertz, Gabriel, Saliba. Like I wouldn't take a risk on a Kivior or a Zinchenko because you're not confident about their minutes. It's a lot, slightly different situation to McAllister. We know the minutes are good. But the point is you're compromising on who the best three picks are from a team that are very valuable to you in game week 34. So I'm not hating on McAllister, great player, and he could be a good FPL pick at another, you know, in different circumstances, I suppose, where maybe three Liverpool isn't so essential and at 5.9 is actually a really decent value pick. I just think for 34, there's three better options from Liverpool. And personally, I've got no interest in him. He might outscore them, but I wouldn't put my money on it. So just want to go through some notes from the weekend. So Brentford players might be worth looking at as punts for game week 33 and beyond, depending on what your kind of chip strategy is. We'll probably talk about them a little bit more in videos, you know, coming up later this week. But Regulon in defense, only 4.4 million. Obviously, you've got Burmo is now back as well. Tony should be fit too. And in game week 33, you've got Sheffield United at home. So if you're free hit 34, wild card 35, that's almost a perfect fixture for a last kind of punt before you start using your chips but even if you've got no chips of course you want to focus on double game week players but you've got Sheffield United at home Luton away Everton away Fulham at home and Bournemouth away is the next five games for Brentford and they end the season with Newcastle at home so they're definitely worth looking at and I think if you're you've got to remember all the chip strategies if you're dead ending 34 then of course you want to get the maximum number of double game week players that you can. But you might already be pre, uh, be pretty high on that number. For me, for example, I can get to 10, even if I bring in a Brentford player this week. So they're definitely worth looking at. No one is immune from Man City rotation. We saw De Bruyne and Harlem miss the Villa game, then Foden misses the game they just had against Crystal Palace. Had to remember the opposition there. Um, I think that's something we're going to continue to see moving forward. I think it would be really interesting to see the lineup for Man City in the Champions League against Real Madrid. Because in the past, and it doesn't always happen like this, but we have seen certain players and positions literally rotate where they play the European game, they miss the Premier League game, then they play in Europe. And I wonder if we might see something similar here where Foden will almost certainly start against Real Madrid. I assume that De Bruyne will as well. But if he doesn't, we might then see him against Luton and it might be that Foden gets rested again. Now, I'm not trying to scaremonger here. If I had Foden, I'd be pretty happy right now because I think the chance of him being rotated multiple times is quite low, especially when the league is obviously still on. But it's a possibility. So I think we need to see the minutes in the lineup for Man City, but there's definitely going to be rotation again against Luton because that is a game that Pep will know he can win even with making like a few changes. Not owning Watkins is going to hurt sometimes. Obviously got a couple of goals uh, against Brentford in game week 32. But I still think if you sold him, it was probably the right decision, right? The Man City game he missed anyway, and this week it's Arsenal away, which is pretty tricky. We're going to go through this again in game week 34. Watkins is probably going to do well, but obviously he doesn't have an extra fixture. So I think it's right to look elsewhere, especially when we've only got three spots. So we just have to kind of get over that. 
uh, with Gusto, if anyone owned him, hopefully you had someone decent that came off the bench. But he was just rested. I think Pochettino said that he'd been ill for the last couple of matches. And so they needed to rest him. Obviously, on paper, it was an easier fixture, even though they made a mess of it. Uh, a bit like how Man United have done plenty of times this season. But he should be okay moving forward. I think with Chelsea, unless you want to go for someone like Dezazi, who seems to be a bit more nailed but less exciting, and Gusto still is the one, Ain't Yuri likely to be okay, but we're going to have to wait and see on an update. I think it's a calf injury. Uh, I think Gary O'Neill said that he'd probably be fine for the next fixture, but we're going to have to wait for the press conference. So I would hold fire on buying him at the moment. Connor Bradley, if you still own him, could be interesting for game week 33 because Trent still hasn't been seen. He still hasn't got minutes. And I think if if Trent doesn't get any minutes midweek, then I think Bradley's going to start again against Palace. Do I think he's worth bringing in? I mean, I've said for weeks now, probably not. I still think that's the case because even if he's, even if Trent is completely out for 34, it's not a guarantee that Bradley would play twice. But to be honest with you, it's starting to look like he might. I thought he was going to get benched against Man United and he didn't. It was Gomez instead. I think that just shows the faith that Klopp has in him. So if Trent was ruled out, I may even go as far to keep him for the double but i think if you want to play it safe it has to be van dyke i think he's the only defender you can guarantee will play both games in 34 but bradley for 33 could still be interesting again maybe if trent's out and it looks like he's going to start possibly that's your one week punt instead of someone like regidon but i guess the thing to be careful there is that you don't block another liverpool player for the double in 34 um and if you're someone that's wild carding in 35 or even if you're not to be honest be careful about losing too much money for players you know you're going to want back. Like Palmer, for example, will depend on when you bought him. But if you go to the transfers page and then click on list, or I've shown you this before, you can see how much you bought a player for. So for me with Palmer, it's 4.9. He's currently 6.1, and I can sell him for 5.5. So if I sell him before Arsenal away in 34 and then want to buy him back, it's going to cost me 0.6 million. Now, as things stand, if you're... Happy to go with just Haaland and no Salah after 34, like on wildcard. Money is no problem, but that doesn't mean it'll always be the case, especially if you want to get Salah back in at some point, possibly last day of the season, uh, when Liverpool have Wolves at home, I think it is. Yeah, last last game at Anfield, obviously last game for Klopp at Anfield too. So, um, I mean last game at Anfield, by the way, in general for the Premier League this season. They're not moving stadium or anything. So just be careful. It's the same with Son, right? I'd have to pay 0.3 to get him back. I'm a little bit less worried about that because I feel like with the blank, people will sell him in 34. But they're, they're just players you're going to want straight back because they've got the double in 35. And as bad as that double looks, I think Palmer and Son are almost like non-negotiable given they've got another double later on as well. The fixtures are pretty good in general. And they're both on penalties too. So just be careful about that. It's not like a major issue. I don't think it's a case where you shouldn't sell these players because at some point you've got to take the points. But you need to think about what your team's going to be after 34 and can you still afford it. If you're not willing to drop Salah, then money gets a lot tighter, right? So just think about those things. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there because there's going to be plenty more questions about this stuff later on this week. Tomorrow we'll do transfer tips. Wednesday, game week preview. Thursday, team selection. Friday, final thoughts. And then obviously Saturday deadline as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Hit that subscribe button. Rate five stars if you listen on podcast. And I'll catch you again tomorrow.